Hello, dear viewers, and welcome to a new episode of the Daily Debate. Uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi visited Ankara in an official visit to uh, Turkey upon an invitation uh, by his Turkish uh, counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Uh, the president's historic visit uh, to uh, Turkey represents a new milestone uh, 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 on the path of strengthening relations uh, between uh, the two countries. The visit is building upon uh, the first, uh, uh, the historic visit by uh, the Turkish president uh, to uh, Egypt last February uh, and ushers in a new phase uh, in the Egyptian um, Turkish uh, uh, relationship uh, in the friendship and joint cooperation, uh, especially economic cooperation uh, between the uh, uh, two countries. Uh, and of course, uh, a lot of uh, politics were on the table, namely the uh, Gaza uh, crisis, the barbaric Israeli aggression against the uh, Palestinians uh, in, uh, in Gaza. And the uh, two countries had really a joint. Uh, 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 um, stance towards that uh, uh, crisis, the just Palestinian cause, calling of course for an immediate uh, uh, ceasefire uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, a trickling in of the human much needed humanitarian aid uh, to the uh, Gaza Strip and calling for the path towards a two state solution with uh, East Jerusalem, Al Quds, as the capital of an, a future independent, viable Palestinian state. We'll be talking about uh, His uh, Excellency's uh, visit to uh, Ankara and uh, President Assisi's meeting is with uh, uh, President Erdogan and the memoranda of understanding that were signed, the economic uh, uh, um, investment deals that were um, inked uh, and uh, the um, improvement and the strengthening of uh, the ties between uh, the two uh, countries in this uh, episode of the Daily Debate in the company of uh, economic and legal expert Dr. Ayman Hunaym. A very good evening to you. Uh, Dr. Ghanim, it's a pleasure Thank having you Thank you so much for the pleasure of mine. Thank you, Dr. Ghanim. Uh, allow us please, as we always do here in the program, and allow us please, dear viewers, first to watch a report uh, uh, about uh, our main uh, topic for tonight. And uh, in this uh, report, uh, uh, we will be um, seeing uh, 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 parts of the uh, historic visit by President Assisi uh, uh, to uh, Turkey. Uh, and his reception by uh, President uh, Erdogan and uh, uh, the uh, uh, strengthening of the ties between Cairo and Ankara. President Abdel Fattah Sisi and his Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan signed in February a joint declaration on restructuring the high-level Strategic Cooperation Council meetings between Egypt and Turkey. The Turkish president visit follows diplomatic and political efforts between the two countries over the past years, culminating in the normalization of relations. There is a convergence between Presidents El Sisi and Erdogan to address common challenges. Egypt and Turkey agreed at the end of 2010 to establish a high-level strategic cooperation council aiming to develop bilateral relations in political, economic and trade fields. The agreement to establish a high-level strategic cooperation council between Egypt and Turkey is considered a highly constructive step. This move contributed to the development of relations between the two countries, anticipated a significant and comprehensive milestone in Cairo-Ankara relations after the establishment of the Strategic Cooperation Council. The high-level Strategic Cooperation Council serves as an important platform for coordination and consultation between the Egyptian and Turkish sides on various regional and international issues. This includes developments in the Middle East, the Maghreb region, especially Libya, and the situation in the Horn of Africa, as both countries seek to establish security and stability on the African continent. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan affirmed his country's commitment to elevating the level of relations between the two nations, recognizing a similar will on the Egyptian side. 
President Abdel Fattah Sisi stated that there is an interest in enhancing joint coordination between Egypt and Turkey. Leveraging the two states' positions as significant regional players to contribute to achieving peace, stabilizing the region, and creating a conducive environment for prosperity and well-being. Both countries face numerous shared challenges, including the threat of terrorism and the economic and social challenges imposed by the turbulent regional reality. Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. Thank you for staying with us, and thanks to Manel Lebiadi for this report. Uh, back here in the studio with economic and legal expert Dr. Ayman uh, Ghanim. So, Dr. Ayman, uh, um, uh, Dr. Ghanim, it's, it's a historic visit. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and and the aim uh, was to uh, uh, you know strengthen relationships between the two countries, and this is a, uh, a return. Uh, uh, um, uh, President Sisi is returning the visit yes. that uh, President Erdogan made to uh, yes. Egypt yes. last February. Yes. Actually, you have to look at this visit uh, paid by President Abdel Fattah Sisi to Turkey, this official visit, this historic visit, as you mentioned, as you righteously, righteously mentioned, that uh, we have to look uh, at this visit from a more, a more of a bird's eye view or a holistic eye view of the uh, the, the major objectives and major trends of the Egyptian diplomacy. Egypt's diplomacy uh, in the New Republic uh, under the leadership of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has uh, stable relationships and has uh, balanced relationships between the East and the West with all the powers. We have very strong relationships with the United States, its Western allies, the United Kingdom, uh, Western Europe, North America. We also have very strong relationships with the Eastern uh, countries. I don't want to say the Eastern Bloc, but the Eastern countries, mainly the BRICS countries, uh, Russia, uh, China. Uh, India has been always uh, a more of a non-aligned uh, power between the East and the West, uh, maintaining uh, also a middle position between the East and the West. Uh, those relationships that I'm mentioning uh, on the political level, on the strategic level, and also on the economic level, we know that uh, the economy and, the, uh, and politics, they have an interrelationship. Uh, they strengthen each other. The economic cooperation strengthens uh, uh, political coordination and vice versa. So uh, Egypt has strong and balanced relationships between all, the, between all the different powers. And here in the Middle East, Egypt is one uh, of the major pillars of the Middle East. Actually, it's a cornerstone for the stability of this region. Egypt and Turkey are two major powers in the Middle East, uh, both on the political, the strategic, as well as the uh, economic level. You know that uh, Turkey actually is it's an economic superpower. Uh, the Turkish economy <coughs> uh, will reach uh, around 1.1 trillion US dollars in 2024, measured by the gross domestic product, the mm. GDP. Also for our viewers to understand, the gross domestic product means all the goods and services produced inside the parameters of a country within one year. Okay, and so this is the most uh, yani value, uh, uh, feasible or the most meaningful uh, measure for a country's economy. Uh, Turkey, uh, Turkey's exports in 2023 amounted to around 254 billion US dollars and uh, Turkey is uh, maybe the fifth or the sixth country in the world in terms of the uh, exportation of textiles and ready-made garments and they have very renowned brands. Uh, their exports uh, from uh, textiles and ready-made garments amounted to, uh, to around 13 billion US dollars in 2023. Uh, also looking at the Turkish uh, tourism, and this is uh, a very important experiment and experience that we have to learn from. Mm. Uh, Egypt, uh, or, sorry, Turkey's uh, market of uh, tourism attracted revenues of, 50, of around 50 or maybe 49.5 billion US dollars in 2023, and this is according to the World uh, Tourism Organization. 
Uh, one very important aspect about Turkey that we have to learn from is that the, uh, the Turkish experience of or experiment in, in economic development uh, actually it's uh, more or less or it has many features that resembles the Egyptian uh, experience and uh, program. Uh, it's a diversified economy, let's say. This is one of the resemblances. No, no, we both have yes, diversified yes. economies. Yes, but uh, here I mean that in, 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 uh, in the middle to late 1990s, uh, the governments of uh, Suleiman Dumerel, uh, Torgot Ozal, and then Tanso Chiller, mm -hmm. uh, they invested a huge amounts of, of, of funds in the infrastructure because Turkey, like us, it, uh, they had a problem with the infrastructure. They had, they had a problem of uh, unviable or let's say uh, inefficient infrastructure like us. And so they invested huge funds either in uh, power plants or in uh, bridges, in, in building roads, in building bridges, in, building, in, in improving and revamping their ports. Mm. And that was the uh, major basis, the cement basis, I would say, for the present Turkish government uh, to push the economy to the levels that it reached. Uh, as I said, Turkey is number 18 in the world in terms of, its, of the size of its economy. It, uh, it uh, exports around 255 billion US dollars per annum in terms of, uh, of uh, exportations. Its, its service economy is huge. The tourism is 50 billion US dollars. All these uh, achievements were, were not possible without uh, such investments in uh, infrastructure. Right. So this is one of the resemblances between mm. Egypt and Turkey. Mm. Also, Egypt and Turkey are uh, really interested in the stability and, and, um, and peace of the Middle East. Uh, that's why, as you said, uh, Egypt and Turkey are trying to reach a ceasefire uh, in the present uh, barbaric, actually, unfortunately, war of Israel against Gaza. And Egypt and Turkey are trying uh, to push towards uh, having a, a fair and permanent settlement of the Palestinian cause mm, mm. Uh, based on the, the, the two-state solution and based on uh, establishing a free, independent, viable Palestinian state with Jerusalem, with East Jerusalem as, uh, um, as its capital. Right, uh, Dr. Ghanim, um, uh, I, I want to stay, stay with the political fire for a while before we return to the economic file, and there's much to say in the potential uh, economic cooperation between the two big economies of uh, Turkey and, uh, and Egypt, but staying with the economic file. Of course, the, the biggest issue in the region, and uh, perhaps globally at the moment, is the, uh, the Palestinian cause and the suffering of um, innocent Palestinian civilians at the hands of the occupation's barbaric uh, aggression. So how did you see, how, how do you foresee also the future cooperation between uh, uh, Cairo and An Ankara in this file, especially that they have diplomatic ties with, with Tel Aviv and uh, uh, they play the role of mediators, some to Egypt does at least, uh, uh, and uh, so potentially, I mean, Cairo and Ankara together can, you know, pressure uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Israel to an extent that might make uh, a difference. So what about the, the, um, uh, the need also for, uh, you know, for more cooperation even in, in, in this file? It seems that there is an accord uh, uh, when it comes to the overall um, a stance or point of view, but what can be done on the ground maybe to, uh, uh, to have a bigger effect? Well, actually, uh, all the countries of the world now, they are starting to feel, again, I'll go back to the economic uh, perspective, they are starting to feel the financial and economic cost of the Israeli war on Gaza. Uh, there are a lot of risks regarding the supply of oil from the Gulf. Uh, we've seen now a lot of oil tankers, they divert their course from, uh, from uh, the Red Swiss sea. Canal, yeah. from the Red Sea, yes, mm. to uh, the Cape of Good Hope. Because of the Houthi attacks. Uh, exactly, yeah. because of the Houthi attacks in uh, southern Yemen against the tankers. And, and so this would increase the price of oil because, you know, mm. uh, 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 this would add to the cost of oil. Uh, this would increase the, 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 the price of oil, yes, mm. exactly, adding to the cost of oil. So this will return us to the, uh, to the uh, environment 
uh, after the or uh, uh, at the beginning of the uh, Russia Ukraine war because mm. you know uh, we remember that because Russia is one of the major supply suppliers of uh, oil and natural gas in the world Russia used to supply around 40 percent of uh, Europe's natural gas needs uh, before the war so the the uh, Russia Ukraine war led to an increasing prices of fuel and this spurred a wave of a major global inflation that we're still suffering from until now and this led mm. to increasing interest rates either in the US or in Europe by very high amounts the US interest increased by around 5% which is a very huge amount and this is the highest interest rate let's say from uh, around 22 years in, the, in, the, in Europe it increased by 3.75% so uh, now the world is, is, is really feeling the uh, increasing cost of the uh, Israeli attacks and the Israeli barbaric uh, war mm. against uh, Gaza. I, so, Israel itself is suffering economically yes. and Egypt of course is, uh, is affected, yes. the Suez Canal revenues, tourism and, and, and you name it. Exactly, and, mm. and also the whole world now, mm. it's not only about the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the problem of the, or the economic problem, also uh, the world's conscience uh, is, is, is uh, being uh, severely hurt and damaged mm. by all these scenes of the mm. barbaric Israeli attacks and especially... Uh, Killing women and children. Exactly. I mean, most of the victims have been... Uh, uh, defenseless women and children. Exactly, and and uh, many of the many of the people around, many of the free people around the world, they are now blaming their governments for not intervening strongly against mm. the Israeli will to continue the war. Mm. So uh, all these factors can be used uh, tactfully by Egypt and Turkey, and also by the major powers in the Middle East that want to stop this war uh, from expanding. So how important is Egypt and Turkey? Uh, 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 in that specific uh, uh, regard because both Egypt and Turkey for instance have ties with Iran and have talks with, with Iran. The Iranian element is important. Uh, so uh, um, again how important is this cooperation between Cairo and Ankara uh, uh, to making sure that things don't spread? Yes. Well actually you know that uh, uh, Turkey is a member in the NATO Okay, so it's it's a major ally of the United States, and even during the uh, Cold War um, before 1989, uh, the the American presence in Turkey was very important to deter the former Soviet Union, and still the uh, the military cooperation between uh, Turkey and the U.S. is really important, not only for Turkey but also for the U.S. and all the Western powers, and especially now that the Western Ukraine. powers, yeah. exactly, mm. now the Western powers mm. feel the threat of mm. Russia, mm. Uh, not only against Ukraine, but also against the, mm. the, the other neighboring countries like mm. Poland and other Eastern mm. European countries that joined NATO. So uh, this would give Turkey uh, strength and, and uh, I would say negotiating power, I would say political clout and negotiating power in order to try to persuade the Western allies that support Israel uh, to, uh, to stop this support or at least to condition it with the uh, immediate ceasefire and allowing the humanitarian aid to flow into Gaza mm. and then to reach a, a, a final settlement of the Palestinian uh, cause uh, based on the two-state uh, solution and, uh, and having an independent Palestinian state with Jerusalem at, uh, or as its capital. Right. Uh, also Egypt, uh, I started my talk telling you that Egypt has strong ties with both the East and the West and, and by the way e Egypt's soft power is very strong. Egypt is very respected worldwide for its history, for its uh, moderate policy, for its uh, reasonable uh, stance in, in many, in many, uh, in many uh, worldwide causes. Absolutely. So uh, all these elements can be integrated between Egypt and Turkey, but not only between Egypt and Turkey. Uh, we also need the cooperation uh, with and the coordination with other uh, powers in the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia, like the United Arab Emirates, like Jordan, uh, like Iraq. Uh, in order to uh, persuade, number one, to persuade the Israelis to stop the war and to reach a final settlement. And mm. the, the incentive of uh, having economic cooperation or the incentive of, of at least stopping the economic losses can be used in this regard. Right. Uh, 
Before I leave the political file, I must ask about this. Um, now Egypt and Turkey are, are, are turning the page uh, uh, of the Libyan crisis and are talking about you know, uh, um, presidential and legislative elections there and bringing calm uh, in, in Libya. Uh, uh, of course, also Egypt is uh, um, involved in, in the Turkish-Syrian or is trying to uh, uh, um, bring peace and calm to, to Syria as well and would like to see uh, uh, Turkey and Syria mend things uh, uh, in the best possible means. So these two uh, files, uh, Libya, uh, uh, Syria, and the fact that, you know, again, the, 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 um, um, the pragmatism and, and the um, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, of the Egyptian diplomacy and the fact that Egypt has always been balanced, always been open, even uh, uh, if there was some tension at some time with this or that country, uh, uh, Egypt is, is always open. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, uh, you uh, uh, righteously mentioned the pragmatism of the Egyptian diplomacy. Yes, Egypt's diplomacy, Egypt's policy is pragmatic. I would say it's politically practical, okay? But we have to always remember that our ability uh, to, to enact uh, a pragmatic and uh, a moderate policy on the world's arena, on the regional arena, this depends on our strength. That's why Egypt, during the last 10 years, Egypt undertook a massive build-up a massive build-up process, okay, uh, both on the economic and the, the political and the military levels. We have seen right. uh, increasing and improving uh, the, uh, the, the, the armament of the Egyptian ar army. Okay, mm. we have seen mm. adding the, uh, the uh, helicopter carriers, uh, improving the, the Egyptian navy's capabilities, improving the Egyptian uh, air force. Uh, the, the, the Egyptian strength on the military side, the political side, as well as the economic side, it adds to the ability of this country uh, to enact uh, reasonable policy on both the regional and the worldwide arenas. I would also say here that uh, the Egyptian policy has always uh, uh, been bent to uh, reconciliation, has always been bent to trying to reach common grounds and enforcing such common grounds by uh, political and economic cooperation and common interests. So, and, and that's why it's important uh, to emphasize the, the, the uh, common interests and, and uh, common economic interests. And that's why we've seen President Abdel Fattah Sisi is signing, we've heard his, uh, the, the delegate uh, accompanying uh, President El Sisi will sign around 20 memorandum of understanding. Uh, in order to improve and increase the uh, bilateral uh, trade between Egypt and Turkey from less than 10 billion US dollars now to maybe 15 billion in the future and mm. trying to improve the uh, Turkish investments in Egypt because when Turkey starts to have more investment in Egypt then Turkey will have interests here in Egypt then it will be uh, very hard for politics to divert from the economic path, from the economic path of cooperation. Presently, uh, Turkey has investments here in Egypt of around 3 billion US dollars, uh, employing around 70,000 employees directly and, and providing around 100,000 job opportunities okay. indirectly. Okay, we're diving now in, in, in the economic uh, file. Yes. One last question before we sure. do so, uh, Dr. Ghanem, please allow me. The deep-rooted uh, uh, cultural and social ties uh, uh, b uh, between uh, uh, Egypt uh, uh, and Turkey. I just want to talk yes, about yes, this. Yes, this well, actually, this whole region, Egypt, the Levant, including Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, uh, also Iraq and Turkey, and, and also Arabia. Uh, uh, in the past, it was only one, it was one region, and many families, many tribes moved from here and there, and that's why you, you'll find many Egyptian families having Turkish origin and vice versa many of the families in, in uh, Turkey have an Egyptian origin. So this actually facilitates the cooperation and the dealing. Uh, this adds ease to, the, to, to dealing between uh, both countries. But I would also emphasize that uh, the, the most important thing is to have common interests both on the political and the economic grounds. Of course having cultural ties and having uh, yeah, family ties and, and having f uh, cultural resemblances, mm. uh, common origins would mm. help, but the, the, the most important pillar is the economic and political uh, common interests. Right.
economy now. So how important is this cooperation for both countries? Well, uh, actually now, uh, as I told you, e uh, Egypt now, uh, its economy um, undertook a major uh, reform, a major reform program during the last 10 years. Egypt was able to undertake a massive infrastructure program. For example, we increased our national um, uh, road network by around 7,000 kilometers. Uh, we improved uh, around 10,000 kilometers from the existing national uh, road network. Uh, now our national road network is around 31,000 kilometers, 17,000, uh, which means 54% of them uh, they have been worked on during the last 10 years. So mm. this is a massive uh, build-up. Mm. Uh, and as I told you before, this resembles the massive uh, build-up of infrastructure in Turkey in the 1990s under the trio, uh, Suleiman Dumirel, Turgotuzal, and then Tanso Chiller. And that was the basis for uh, starting to have uh, or starting to boost the Turkish economy and push it uh, to become one of the major uh, pr uh, production and service economies in the world. Uh, this and this is why you hinted at the fact, uh, at your vision of uh, perhaps Egypt potentially benefiting from the Turkish e example in economic uh, success. Exactly. exactly. Mm. And, and, and uh, I would say also that uh, uh, the Egyptian economy presently presents uh, um, massive, very lucrative opportunities for investment. Uh, uh, with, with, with the revamping of our infrastructure now, it's very easy to, uh, to, uh, to transfer goods and services between different ports. Uh, Egypt established the um, Swiss Canal Economic Zone. Um, it, 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 uh, it completed the, the second uh, branch of Swiss Canal with, with a length of 72 uh, kilometers, reducing the, uh, the passage time from 18 hours uh, to 11 hours. It revamped six major ports in the uh, Swiss Canal economic uh, zone, uh, starting from uh, El, El Tour in, in the southern Sinai. Uh, Adabeya and El Sokhna in southern uh, Suez Bay and then east and west Port Said and El Arish in uh, northern Sinai. So this, this presents uh, uh, massive opportunities for foreign investment and we know that the Turkish investors are really uh, yeah, um, uh, keen and they, uh, they are really interested in exploiting such uh, opportunities especially that we have another important uh, competitive advantage that competitive advantage we used to dislike actually and actually it, it has some negative uh, aspects and negative sides which is the reduction in the value of the Egyptian pound the devaluation mm. of the Egyptian pound of course the devaluation mm. of the Egyptian pound uh, led to a local inflation yes we, we, we all acknowledge but it increased our competitiveness and it increased the competitiveness of the Egyptian factors of production, especially labor. Mm. Now the Egyptian labor has been much more competitive than uh, other countries' labor. And also the proximity, the, the proximity between Egypt and Turkey, this means that uh, goods and services will not, uh, will not take time and will not take uh, high cost to be transferred from Egypt and Turkey, unlike Mm. Uh, presumed cooperation between Turkey and any other uh, Southeast uh, Asian uh, country, uh, you'll have to add the cost of freight, you'll have mm. to add the cost of shipping, but mm. we don't have this here. Mm. So uh, Egypt presents huge opportunities for Turkey to grow its economy for the benefits of both Egypt and Turkey, and then this would strengthen the economic ties and, and, and the political coordination between the two, because all this politics uh, rests on economy. Dr. Ghanim, um, um, President Assisi and President Erdogan chaired the first meeting of the uh, high-level strategic cooperation council. So we now have a high-level strategic cooperation council between Egypt and, uh, and, and Turkey. And uh, the aim is to achieve qualitative uh, shift in all fields, uh, uh, cooperation, of course, uh, notably in trade, uh, investment, tourism, transportation, agriculture, amongst others? Well, uh, actually, uh, our um, experience uh, with such high-level councils, and I would uh, cite or quote the 
the example of the uh, high level council of investment mm. so uh, whenever you have a high level council chaired by the president this gives a political will and this gives the political strength this resembles that there is a political will and so this gives strength to the movement this, this gives a momentum so uh, now as president El Sisi and president Erdogan uh, sharing such uh, high level council uh, and uh, this council is membered by all the ministers and all the officials uh, that are related to the subject of uh, economic and political cooperation between Egypt and Turkey. We expect to have a lot of momentum in the near future, especially that Egypt is, in, is so much interested in improving and increasing its foreign direct investment or the, right. the flow of uh, or the, the inflow of foreign direct investment. We have the law number 72 uh, for the year 2017. It gives a lot of prerogatives and powers to the Egyptian government to improve and to encourage the foreign direct investment. It allows uh, granting the, uh, uh, the golden uh, license for uh, serious uh, and important projects. It allows uh, for uh, tax holidays and tax incentives of up to 50% of the investment cost of any project. Mm. Uh, it allows returning to the investor uh, around half of the cost of uh, infrastructure of the land for uh, strategically viable projects. Uh, all these uh, prerogatives uh, granted to the Egyptian government, especially now that we, ha that we again, uh, we returned our Ministry of Investment. So now we have a dedicated Ministry of Investment, so we expect to have uh, an increase in the flow of foreign direct investment from Turkey, especially that the experience of the Turkish FDI uh, here in Egypt, it was a viable, it was an economically feasible experience. Uh, the, the FDIs, the, the Turkish FDIs here in, in Egypt <coughs> has been amongst the uh, most successful foreign ventures here in Egypt and uh, generating uh, very high returns, again depending on the Egyptian competitiveness that we've just cited having uh, a modern infrastructure or, or modernizing our infrastructure, modernizing our uh, roads, modernizing our uh, uh, economy, uh, improve, uh, uh, allowing the free trade in, in uh, uh, currency or, or uh, free floating the currency, uh, so allowing the, the, uh, the foreign currency to be present and to be there in the market uh, and traded at its uh, fair price. All these elements led to having a feasible uh, environment for the Turkish foreign direct investment. And that's why we expect an increase in the, in, the, in the very near future based on such, number one, based on the competitive advantages that Egypt has built during the last 10 years and based on the political will that's uh, uh, symbolized by having the two presidents chairing the high level uh, council. Right, uh, Dr. Hunayman, uh, and, and also uh, one uh, p political fire that was tackled that uh, we haven't mentioned yet, but it's important, is Somalia. And, and, and it seemed that Cairo and Ankara agreed uh, on all issues regarding the Somalian file, especially uh, the territorial integrity and the sovereignty and the unity of uh, uh, Somalia's uh, um, uh, lands. Um, now, uh, still with the uh, economic file, what specific sectors do you think, Dr. Ghanim, would benefit more from uh, this potential great economic cooperation? And I think that we must note that even at times when uh, the relationship was not at its best, uh, uh, econ the ec economic cooperation was... Exactly. W was flowing. Exactly. But of course now it can flow to yes. much, much yes. higher yes. levels. Exactly. It was always mm. mentioned mm. during that period, as you righteously said, mm. that uh, the, the, uh, although uh, there are some political differences between the two countries, but the economic cooperation is very high between them, or was very high between them, and even you, uh, you could spot a lot of Turkish mm. merchandise being sold here in, in, in Egypt, mm. in Cairo, with, with uh, yani, uh, competitive prices. But if, you, if, if we want to look at the, uh, the major sectors that will benefit from such cooperation, then we have to examine two things. Mm. Number one, the profile of the Turkish uh, exports. Mm. As I told you, uh, Turkey exports more than 254 billion U.S. dollars per annum. 
and the sector that Egypt uh, is targeting and encouraging in the Suez Canal economic zone. So uh, if you look at the Turkish exports, we'll find that Turkey is superb in uh, exporting uh, automotives, uh, automotive parts, of course ready-made garments and uh, textiles with uh, uh, very high brands and, and uh, renowned brands, uh, electronics, um, uh, cables, uh, uh, home appliances. Mm. Uh, mm. Also, Turkey is now targeting uh, to increase its production of uh, clean fuel, of um, uh, green hydrogen, and uh, with a less, lesser extent, uh, blue hydrogen. Here, here also, Egypt is targeting a lot of sectors in the Swiss Canal economic zone. We're targeting automotive, as, uh, as in Turkey, we're targeting mm. um, uh, uh, cables, we're targeting um, uh, green hydrogen, blue hydrogen, we're targeting mm -hmm. uh, informatics, mm -hmm. uh, IT. Um, uh, uh, what, what, about the, what about the Egyptian exports to, uh, to Turkey? What, what um, areas, uh, is it also going to be like the um, um, fruits and vegetables mainly? I, I mean, Presently, Egypt um, exports many things to Turkey. As you said, uh, fruits and vegetables, that's one thing. Also cables, uh, some textiles, uh, fuel, and, and also liquefied natural gas. Mm. Uh, the, the, the Turkish uh, mm. state is really interested in uh, importing our LNG. Mm. And uh, we've, we've seen that uh, there, are, there are a lot of interest from Turkey and uh, we expect that in this visit uh, some memorandums of understanding will be signed regarding the exportation of liquefied natural gas from here from Egypt to Turkey because Turkey aspires at becoming one of the main hubs of distributing fuel uh, and energy to Europe. Uh, but also we have to remember that Egypt is trying now <clears throat> to be one of the leading countries in the clean energy, in the green hydrogen and the blue hydrogen. And we've seen a lot of um, Chinese and Indian investments in this regard in Suez Canal. So we expect also that Turkey would come in and would participate in this because uh, many experts foresee that in the coming 20 to 30 years, maybe less, you'll find a major power shift worldwide from the countries that sell and export fossil fuel, mm. uh, coal, uh, petroleum, and to a lesser extent, of course, natural gas, because natural gas, uh, okay, it, it's a fossil fuel, but it, it's, uh, it's more friendly, of course, to the environment than the mm. uh, coal and natural gas, but there will be power shift from such countries to mm. the countries that are strong and that are leading in the production of uh, clean fuel, mainly the, the green and blue hydrogen. And mm. such countries, especially if such countries are producing such fuel w in a cost-effective way. And as I told you here in mm. Egypt, we have a lot of uh, competitive uh, advantage elements or elements that will give us uh, more competitiveness uh, than other maybe Asian powers. We are uh, near to uh, sou uh, so, um, South Europe. Uh, uh, the, the reduction or the devaluation of the Egyptian pound has led to improving the, the competitiveness mm. of our labor and our other factors of production. So mm. we, we would expect in the coming uh, maybe uh, one or two years a lot of investments coming in in such fields. Indeed, uh, Dr. Ghanim, uh, it is to mention that uh, 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 President Assisi and President Erdogan attended the signing of uh, 17 uh, memorandums of understanding uh, to uh, uh, um, regarding uh, between the ministers of the trade and industry in, in both countries and others were signed on higher education, scientific research, railway, civil aviation, telecommunications and ICT, agricultural technology, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, funding SMEs, capacity building in the tourism sector, energy, uh, labor and employment, environment protection and urban development, so really across uh, yes. uh, the board. So uh, we still have another report to show uh, to our dear uh, uh, viewers, uh, but before we leave you, uh, we want a, a, a closing um, a statement from our dear guest, economic and legal expert, Dr. Ayman Ghunim, on the historic visit of President uh, uh, Sisi to uh, Turkey and his meetings with President uh, uh, Erdogan. 
Well, actually, Egypt is always open, as you said, for cooperation. Uh, Egypt is always open for uh, good relationships. Egypt is always open for uh, common interests and for enhancing the peace, prosperity, and stability of the Middle East. Uh, Egypt extends its, uh, its, arm, its hand to everybody in friendship in, uh, in uh, common ties and Egypt is building its strength in order to be a viable and strong partner for all, the, for all different partners. All right, uh, dear viewers, uh, so we will leave you now, but before we do so, uh, on behalf of you, of you, we thank very much our distinguished guest with us in the studio, Dr. Ayman Ghanim, the economic and legal uh, expert. Thank you very much, Most Dr. Welcome. Ghanim. It's been Most informative, Most uh, um, and it's been a pleasure having you with us. Uh, dear viewers, that's not the end of the daily debate. We still have another report uh, to watch about uh, the President's historic visit uh, 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 to uh, Turkey. So let's watch uh, this uh, uh, report. President Abdel Fattah Sisi arrived in Turkey on Wednesday afternoon, marking his first visit to Turkey since assuming office in 2014. Spokesman for the presidency, Ambassador Ahmed Fahmi, said President Sisi's historic visit to the Republic of Turkey represents a new milestone on the path of strengthening relations between the two countries. In a joint press conference between President Sisi and his Turkish counterpart, the head of state expressed his happiness with his first visit to Turkey, which will establish a new phase of cooperation and integration between the two countries, and delivered feelings of friendship, love and appreciation from people of Egypt in light of the historical relations and the common cultural and civilizational heritage that the two peoples. The head of state highlighted that the past years witnessed a continuous boom in communication between the Egyptian and Turkish peoples, especially through the growing tourism movement, as well as trade and investment relations, which are witnessing steady growth in addition to the increase in Turkish investments in Egypt, especially in the field of manufacturing. In light of the sincere desire of the two countries to further develop relations and cooperation and to build on the results of President Erdogan's visit to Egypt last February, President el-Sisi and the Turkish President Erdogan were pleased to chair the first meeting of the high-level Strategic Cooperation Council between Egypt and Turkey, which aims to achieve a qualitative shift in all fields, most notably trade, investment, tourism, transportation and agriculture. The two heads of state also witnessed today the signing of a number of memoranda of understanding that aim to establish a new institutional framework for cooperation between our two countries.